Robin Hood's flight James Henry Lee Hunt Robin Hood's mother, these twelve years now, has been gone from her earthly home. And Robin has paid, he scarce knew how, a sum for a noble tomb. The churchyard lies on a woody hill, but open to sun and air, it seems as if the heavens still were looking and smiling there. Often when Robin looks that way, he looked through a sweet thin tear. But he looks in a different manner, they say, towards the Abbey of Veer. He cared not for its ill-got wealth, he felt not for his pride. He had youth, and strength, and health, and enough for one beside. But he thought of his gentle mother's cheek how it sunk away, and how she used to grow more weak and weary every day. And how, when trying a hymn, her voice at evening would expire, how unlike it was the arrogant noise of the hard throats in the choir, and Robin thought too of the poor, how they toiled without their share and how the elms at the abbey door but kept them as they were, and he thought him then of the friars again, who rode jingling up and down with their trappings and things as fine as the king's, though they wore but a shaven crown. And then while Robin he thought of the king, how he got all his forests and deer, and how he made the hungry swing if they killed but one in a year. And thinking thus, as Robin stood, digging his bow in the ground, he was aware in Gomeline Wood, of one who looked around. Amperson quo. And what is Will doing, Amperson Quo? said Robin then, Amperson Quo. That he looks so fearful and wan? Amperson Quo. Amperson Quo. Oh my dear master that should have been, I am a weary man. Amperson Quo. Amperson Quo. A weary man, Amperson Quo. said Will Scarlet, Amperson Quo. Am I? For unless I pilfer this wood to sell to the Fletchers, for want I shall die here in this forest so good. Amperson Quo. Here in this forest where I have been so happy and so stout, and like a palfrey on the green have carried you about. Amperson Quo. Amperson Quo. And why, Will Scarlet, not come to me? Why not to Robin, Will? For I remember thy love and thy glee, and the scar that marks thee still. Amperson Quo and not a soul of my uncle's men to such a pass should come, while Robin can find in his pocket or bin a penny or a crumb. Amperson Quo. Stay thee, Will Scarlet, man, stay a while. And kindle a fire for me. Amperson Quo. And into the wood for half a mile, he has vanished instantly. Robin Hood, with his cheek on fire, has drawn his bow so stern, and a leaping deer, with one leap higher lies motionless in the fern. Robin, like a proper knight as he should have been, carved a part of the shoulder right, and bore off a portion clean. Amperson Quo. Oh, what hast thou done, dear master mine? What hast thou done for me? Amperson Quo. Amperson Quo. Roast it, Will, for accepting wine, thou shalt feast thee royally. Amperson Quo. And Scarlet took and half roasted it blubbering with blinding tears, and ere he had eaten a second bit, a trampling came to their ears. They heard the tramp of a horse's feet, and they listened and kept still, for Will was feeble and knelt by the meat. And Robin he stood by Will. Amperson Quo. Seize him, seize him. Amperson Quo. The abbot cried with his fat voice through the trees. Robin a smooth arrow fell to night, and Will jumped stout with his knees. Amperson Quo. Seize him, seize him. Amperson Quo. And now they appear the abbot and foresters three. Amperson Quo. Twas I, Amperson Quo. Cried Will Scarlet, Amperson Quo. That killed the deer. Amperson Quo. Says Robin, Amperson Quo. Now let not a man come near, or he's dead as dead can be. Amperson Quo. But on they came and with an embrace the first one the air met. And he came pitching forward and fell on his face, like a stumbler in the street. The others turned to that abbot vain, but and quo. Seize him. Amperson quo. Still he cried, and as the second turned again, an arrow was in his side. Amperson quo. Seize him, seize him still, I say, Amperson quo. Cried the abbot in furious chafe, Amperson quo. Or these dogs will grow so bold some day, even priests will not be safe. Amperson Quo. A fatal word. For as he sat urging the sword to cut, 
an arrow stuck in his punch so fat, as in a lethern but, as in a lethern but of wine, or dough, a household lump, or a pumpkin, or a good beef chine, stuck that arrow with a dump. Amperson quo. Truly, Amperson quo, said Robin without fear, smiling there as he stood, Amperson quo. Never was slain so fat a deer in good old Gomeline wood. Amperson quo. Amperson quo. Pardon, pardon, Sir Robin Stout. Amperson quo. Said he that stood apart. Amperson quo. As soon as I knew thee, I wished thee out of the forest with all my heart. Amperson quo. And I pray thee let me follow thee anywhere under the sky, for thou wilt never stay here with me, nor without thee can I. Amperson quo. Robin smiled, and suddenly fell into a little thought. And then into a leafy dell, the three slain men they brought. Ankle deep in leaves so red, which autumn there had cast, when going to her winter bed she had undressed her last. And there in a hollow, side by side, they buried them under the tree. The abbot's belly, for all its pride, made not the grave be seen. Robin Hood, and the Forster, and Scarlet the Goodwill, struck off among the green trees there up a bithless hill. And Robin caught a sudden sight, of merry sweet Locksley town, reddening in the sunset bright. And the gentle tears came down. Robin looked at the town and land and the churchyard where it lay. And poor Will Scarlet kissed his hand, and turned his head away. Then Robin turned with a grasp of Will's, and clapped him on the shoulder, and said with one of his pleasant smiles, Amperson Quo. Now she us three men bolder. Amperson Quo. And so they took their march away as firm as if to fiddle, to journey that night and all next day with Robin Hood in the middle.